Hello everyone, it's Ampersand, and in this video I'll talk about perhaps the hottest topic in the Linux community right now, X and Wayland. I'll delve into the differences between them and discuss the prospects of Wayland in 2024. So get comfortable and enjoy watching. For decades the primary windowing system on Linux has been the X server. The X server was developed back in 1984, and it was based on a client-server architecture, where clients, meaning Windows, could send requests to display graphics to the X server. And Xorg is one of the implementations of this protocol, that was created in 2004. Throughout the history of X development, a vast array of features has been introduced, some of which made sense decades ago such as APIs for drawing curves and rectangles or rasterizing text, although now toolkits like UT and GDK were created to take on these tasks. As a result, XSORC contains a significant amount of legacy code that was used in the past but is largely unnecessary now. A modern Linux system using XSORC as the display server looks something like this. There are applications that handle most of their interface rendering themselves, there is a window manager responsible for drawing window decorations, and there is XORG, surrounded by a plethora of libraries and with its own drawing API that is scarcely used anymore. This is where Wayland comes in, aiming to address the shortcomings of XORG. This protocol also follows a client-server architecture, but it doesn't carry any unnecessary baggage. Clients here are Windows, and the server is the Wayland compositor, which gathers the graphical output of all windows and displays them together on the screen. The compositor can also handle window decorations, animations, blur and so on, essentially performing similar functions to a window manager and compositor in X. There are numerous different implementations of Wayland compositors, Gnome Matter and KD Queen, as well as many minimalist Wayland compositors like Hyperland, Utile, DWL, RiverWM and many others that use the WLRoots library. However, as always, there are some issues. The first release of Wayland was in 2012, which was 12 years ago. It's only relatively recently that it has reached a state where it can be comfortably used. All this time has been spent deconstructing the legacy left by XORG. For decades it was the heart of the Linux graphical interface, and removing it entirely is not as easy as it may seem. That's why a compatibility layer called XWayland was created which allows legacy applications that Wayland doesn't support yet to run under Wayland. There has been a reaction to the growing popularity of Wayland, epitomized by an article from the creator of the App Image Software Distribution format titled Wayland Breaks Everything. I discussed this article briefly in my video about Hyperland, but in this video I'll delve into it in more detail. Modern user space operating systems are built on layers of abstraction which complicates software interaction and makes the operating system slow and unwidely. Nowadays, nobody seriously writes a game in assembly that directly accesses the graphics card, even though it would offer more FPS. We have graphics rendering libraries like OpenGL, one implementation of which is Meza. We have kernel mod setting, which manages resources like screen resolution and color depth, and is part of DRM, Direct Rendering Manager which is a part of the kernel and provides direct access to the hardware acceleration. Each layer of abstraction incurs a performance cost, but on the other hand, it greatly simplifies the development process. Now let's take a look at the XORG ecosystem, which required separate packages for video card drivers, input devices, the LabGLX library, some legacy applications use the native X API for rendering their interface, a window manager is sitting somewhere separately, and a compositor that was responsible for animations, transparency, and many other things. Here we see quite a lot of layers of abstractions as well, but not all of them are necessary for a modern system, and Wayland was developed to solve this problem. Now we simply have a Wayland compositor and client applications that handle rendering their own interface. Thus, Wayland support has become a step towards simplifying Linux, rather than complicating it. Wayland was not developed as a drop-in replacement for X, but was intended to eventually replace it for the reasons I described above. Therefore, it's not entirely correct to say Wayland breaks everything. Although this is partly true, some things like screen sharing in Discord indeed do not currently work on Wayland. It's more accurate to say not everything has been ported to Wayland, because it's obvious that it shouldn't have all the functionality that XORG had due to Wayland's focus on minimalism. But even now, the problems that Wayland has are being addressed by the Exigit desktop portal and Pipewire. 
The portal offers a standardized way to present platform native open or safe dialogues, notifications, printing, screenshots, screen recording, drag and drop, and much more. Portal largely relies on Pipewire to support these things. Because this framework is not only for handling audio streams, but also video streams. This is a step towards unifying Linux, and I'm going to make a separate video about this topic. Thus, we get a convenient development platform with Portals, Wayland and Pipewire. One of the KD developers, in a response article to Wayland Breaks Everything, suggests calling this platform PW Squared. That's quite original. Therefore, before drawing conclusions about Wayland based on such articles, I recommend trying any Wayland compositor yourself and making your own conclusions. Personally, I haven't encountered any serious problems using Wayland, although I don't deny that they exist. So if there is still some important functionality that doesn't work on Wayland, nobody stops you from continuing to use X or installing X Wayland. As for the prospects, I think that 2024 will be the year of Wayland in the Linux world. Because now almost everything is ready. Probably GNOME and KDE will soon be abandoning X support and fully transitioning to Wayland. And many modern applications simply won't work on X. Whether we like it or not, Linux will move to Wayland. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and have a great rest of your day.